Do you know why Anki is so valuable for language study? Simple, because you can get the program to talk to you. Last time we looked at a few tricks you can use to customize Anki for language study, but there were a few things I didn't say much about. One of the big ones was this sound field that I had promised that I would come back to. And this is the video for that. We're going to go into how sound works in Anki. And trust me, you're going to want to use sound in your flashcards. In my opinion, this is the most important feature that Anki offers. In fact, I think this is even more important than its memory retention algorithm. While the Anki manual tells you a little bit about media, it doesn't tell you many specifics. So I'll try to answer those questions for you. Every field in an Anki node is capable of holding code, including references to media files. To refer to a sound file and to get the program to play it, you create an open bracket, the word sound, a colon, the name of the file, and then a closed bracket. Now, to get the sound file to play in your card when you look at it, you have to refer to the field somewhere in your card template. The audio file will automatically play if it exists. Now the files themselves will be stored in your collection.media folder, which you can see here. My collection.media folder is absolutely massive because of all the cards that I've created. The location of this folder depends on your operating system, and if you're on Linux, it also depends on which distro you're using. I always make sure that I've got a shortcut to this folder on my file manager. It makes things a lot easier when I want to add audio on the fly. Okay, there are two basic ways to get audio files. You can make them automatically by using certain add-ons and computer-generated audio, or you can get them yourself. We'll look at the automatic way first since it's the easiest. For years, I used an inexpensive add-on called Awesome TTS. It was replaced a few years back by something called Hyper TTS. It's pretty cheap, it's about $5 a month, and it gets you access to some really powerful computerized AI voices, especially Microsoft Azure. Azure tends to have the most realistic sounding AI voices, as you can hear in these Korean examples. 장난으로 말하다. 장난으로 말하다. 장난으로 말하다. 장난으로 말하다. Anyway, Hyper TTS is really easy to use. It automatically saves settings depending on the type of note. Schämst du dich selber nicht? If you remember, I decided to save my note types in my decks according to the name of the language. The reason I do this is because it makes Alonso. it really easy to automatically use Hyper TTS to match up the right Alonso. audio with the right language. Alonso. There's a feature that allows you to automatically add audio in bulk. Usually, though, I find myself adding audio to individual notes as I study. Empieza desde la línea 20. I've been doing this for over a decade now, and some of the audio that I added years ago was pretty poor quality. I could do bulk replacements for a ton of cards, but I do worry about going over the limit that's set by the API, and so I tend to do one card at a time. AI-generated audio is nice, of course. But what we really want is authentic native speaker audio. Wer ruft das Einzelne zur allgemeinen Weihe, wo es in herrlichen Akkorden schlägt? And this is where things get a little bit complicated. Now, there is a way in HyperTTS to set it up so that it checks Forvo for uploaded native speaker audio for the word that you're looking for. However, Forvo has a lot of issues. This includes audio files that don't sound right and errors when you try to use its API. And so I've taken up the habit of doing it by hand. Don't worry though, it's pretty fast and easy. Okay, so here's an example. The other day I looked up this word, bachikai. It means inappropriate or out of place. It's easy to find the definition, the kanji, and the hiragana, of course, but we also want to learn how to actually say it. And so I head over to Forvo. I log in there with my free account. I search for the word. I then find the pronunciation that I want, and then I download it. Now I've got the file on my computer. In my spreadsheet of new Japanese words, I make sure to include a field for the sounds, formatted just like I format it in the cards. And I keep the file set aside, ready to add to the collection.media folder when it's time to upload a new batch of cards. Well, I'll show you more in a later video on how to import words and phrases and sentences and so on from a spreadsheet. That's also pretty easy, so don't worry too much about that if you're confused. Anyway, for audio files, I do something similar to this process while I'm studying. Okay. 
I usually have a browser open right next to Anki when I study, as you can see here. Sometimes I'm able to find really good quality audio right when I need it. Occasionally, I'll need to use Audacity to cut out dead air and solve some other problems. Overall, though, it's pretty straightforward. The key is making sure that you don't repeat the same file name. You can use whatever naming convention you like, just as long as it makes sense to you and is easy to remember. And then you get to stuff that you really can't do all that well automatically, you know, like cutting up audio from other sources. This is a little bit more involved, of course. I tend to use Audacity to cut out the sentences I want from whatever it is, maybe a TV show or an audiobook, something like that. Sometimes I'll use Whisper beforehand to generate a script. Of course, you're better off if you can find a file with actual subtitles or the actual spoken text from whatever it is that you've got. That can be really difficult to find, though. Just remember that Whisper will hallucinate and will give you inaccurate spelling. Always double check. Anyway, I'll put the sentence or phrase I want into my spreadsheet. I'll give the snippet I've created a certain file name, usually something easy to remember and repeatable. And then I'll set it all aside for when I do my massive update, which is usually once every month. Cutting up television shows, podcasts, audiobooks, and whatever else is a pretty time-consuming process. It's been a while since I've really had the time to do it the way that I once did. However, if you get into the habit of doing it, you know, like a little bit every day, it's vastly superior to just learning random new words, especially with computer-generated audio. You can learn a lot more from the real-life context than just from new words, and it helps you learn grammar and get a feel for the language as well. And of course, the best part is that all of this audio Default. makes studying a lot more engaging. Language isn't just about reading and writing, after all. Als sie ihn wegstoßen wollte, stolperte sie jedoch rücklings über den Tisch und riss die Vase, die darauf gestanden hatte, mit. Als sie ihn wegstoßen wollte, stolperte. It's also about listening to how things are said and using all of your senses to learn. Shi, con kia la ai? Con kia la ai? And you know, once you get into the habit of doing this, it's really not as time consuming as you might think. Now, naturally, trying to cut up like your favorite anime series into individual sentences will take quite a while. But when you figure out ways to be efficient and you start to break the work up, it's not quite as daunting as it seems at first. And the best part, of course, is that you can use little language hacks like this to eventually achieve a far higher degree of proficiency in your target language than you would by looking at textbooks all day. So give it a try.